show you again how this thing of because they don't want to assimilate into the American culture and American ideology is that now in Jefferson County we have an Arab newspaper. Yes. That is communicate with them only itself. They don't want to get into the English or learn anything else. They want to stick with their Arab roots. Because they want to get rid of our culture and put in Sharia law where they can beat their wives and have three or four wives and uh, it kill anybody that doesn't uh, agree with them on religious ideas. It's uh, And then you turn right around and here's uh, Mayor Fisher and uh, John Yarmouth out there saying, oh, we need more Muslims in here. We need more Muslims. Bring them all in. I can't understand all of that. Well, uh, yeah. But most of these things that are going on in other parts of the world is not being reported in the American media. Yes. Uh, a lot of this is kept it under. And then the Council of American Islamic Relations uh, is, is working very hard. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood has been one of the organizations that spend more time at the White House than and most of the others. And all of these things are to suppress it. The FBI, their training programs were carefully reconstructed so that they didn't offend the Muslim community. And all these things going on simultaneously. But again, the other parts of the world, like Greece, as you've just seen, and, and other countries, Italy's facing the same thing, and all of the countries bordering on the Mediterranean, where all of these boats and other things are coming in from not only Syria, uh, but from all the other Arab countries along the coast and all of that. And then, like a country like Sweden is now the rape capital. I know. Of the world. Unbelievable. And all of those and things. And the judges say, oh, no, it's the, it's the girls' fault. Right. And the same thing was happening in, in, in Britain and yeah, Birmingham yeah. and other cities. And, and they said, well, that's all right. Bring them on in anyway. So we've got. I can't understand that. Now, here's, uh, Here's t This is from uh, Gary Bowers' uh, newsletter. He said, last week, two polls found that the overwhelming majority of Americans oppose the president's plan to increase the number of Middle East refugees coming into the United States. They don't care about what the people want. They want Islam in here, and they don't care whether okay. you like it or not. He's going to bring them in. Right. There's a number of people that are saying, wait a minute, charity begins at home. We've got homeless people. We have families where two or three children living in their automobiles and all yeah. that. Yeah, we're bringing in and, and giving a first-class lifestyle to these immigrants that are coming in with health care, with food, with housing, and all of those other things. So, Unemployment. We, we don't have enough jobs for our own people, and they're bringing in more and more exactly. laborers for less and less jobs. Well, this, this again goes back to what's been going on for several years on our southern borders and what we're now facing is a major crisis on our northern borders with Canada. Canada has a very, very slim guarding of any kind of thing because of the friendship between the two countries. But people from America and people from Canada go back and forth all the time without going through checkpoints of any kind at all. Yeah. And in the winter time, when the rivers and the lakes freeze over, they can just drive right straight across and drive right back. And all of these things are going on, and the Islamic community knows that, and they're taking in larger numbers. The new president of of uh, Canada, Thoreau, has uh, said, "I'm only going to take widows and orphans." Yeah, and none of the men. Now this is the raising a lot of hell. Oh, no, no, he can't do that. And how he was able to follow through on that will be very interesting and see if he was Absolutely. able to pull that off and keep the young men of Islam out of Canada. They've already got a large number there. There are several ISIS type training camps that are taking place in in Canada, and all of these things are right on our northern border, which again has very little of, of no protection. Well, you know, um, this is uh, a uh, uh, an article, a letter, a newsletter that said that uh, Obama is uh, getting rid of the top military officials that if they don't agree with him on same-sex marriage and all of these things that he's 
getting rid of those right. military people and putting in people that will go along with whatever he wants to do. Well, you could look at every one of his appointments, the various czars and everything else that are going on at the same time, the cutback on the military. Yeah. And we have a Navy now that's smaller than it was before World War I. Uh, we have ships that cannot defend themselves against China or anything that's going on in Southeast Asia. There are issues exploding all over the world simultaneously, and we're not addressing any of those, and we're we we'll almost have a blackout on information that, that will be upsetting to American people. Well, that's exactly right. Um, the uh, the military is getting smaller, and uh, the the dangers are getting greater. And he's uh, getting rid of. You know, it reminds me of when they took prayer out of the public schools. They right. said, "Well, now if we got generals that are Christians and want to." believe in God, well, we got to get rid of them because we want other people that are, uh, you know, it's like they're trying to get rid of God in the military. Right. And uh, the problem with Christians, and, and one of the things that upset me was in early on when the revolt started in Syria, there was a Christian village that was over a thousand years old. They had beautiful churches. All of the families that lived there were all Christian. And they were one of the first groups who were totally annihilated. And all of the buildings and all of the churches were destroyed and stoned to the ground. And what people have to understand is that Islam is not a religion. That's nor right. It, nor is it a cult. In its fullest form, it is a complete, total, 100% system of life. And if, if you believe in the Quran and all the rest of that, that's the only way that you can you can live. So to become assimilated into any other society is a complete disregard for their own religion. So now, here's the map we were looking at earlier. It shows the different states right. that the governor said, no, we're not going to bring any more terrorists in exactly. here. Uh, and uh, I think our new governor, uh, Matt Bevan, right. is uh, planning to join those that are not going to welcome more and more Muslim right. terrorists right. And that map into also, our country. You know, that map also shows where the Syrian refugees have been assimilated. And, and Kentucky, and particularly Louisville, uh, is one of the largest groups uh, in terms of number as a percentage of the population of any of the other states in the country. And this is another thing that we're putting it overburden on our, our taxpayers and our citizens. The mayor, uh, Fisher, and Congressman Yarmouth say, oh, no, we need more Muslims in here. And then Matt Bevan has mentioned the possibility that when he is sworn in as governor of Kentucky, one of his first actions will be some way to curtail this activity. Now, here it said, uh, at this time of this uh, writing, it said that there are 34 governors that have uh, said they, they don't want any more terrorists right. in their state. Because if you think of anything other than the fact that, number one, it's the economic impact that exactly. it brings to that state that they cannot afford, much less to deal with the other aspects of the issue. So they're faced with this because, like the federal government has done time after time, they've put a responsibility on the states. They've helped sometimes in the front-end funding, but it's ultimately left to the states to pick up the tab, to handle all of these things. And it goes back to the interstate system and other things where it was 90-10, 90% for the federal and 10% and for the states. And then it's got ultimately reversed. Oh, really? So now we exactly. have to pay most of it. Right. Here's a picture. I don't know if you can see this. We'll try to get it better on the program. But this is uh, uh, John Yarmouth, Congressman John Yarmouth, uh, saying that he wants uh, more Muslims in Louisville. Right. And here's uh, Mayor Fisher at the meeting last night. Right. It was after dark, and the uh, everybody was passed out a candle. And he's saying, oh, yes, we need more Muslims. And he's talking about the Irish coming here or something. The Irish weren't trying to blow us up. No. But the Muslims are, and they've sworn to blow us up. So it's... Uh, 
more and more problems. Well, Congress has been paralyzed in this subject. They're afraid to do anything else. They don't want to find anything. And this is where the next election coming up for members of the Congress, that we need to take a serious look at who is our friends and who is doing what to help us and who is doing something to hurt us. Right. And, and take an active part in the elections that are coming up next year because the critical part can be stopped by Congress if they will get off their dust and go at it and, and fight, yes. fight these issues. But right now they're they're paranoid, they're afraid to do this, they might offend this group or that group. And all of those factors have been playing into that to actually put a lid on all of the things that their responsibility as members of Congress are being neglected. Now, uh, this is a letter we're putting out, and uh, it's got the address and name and phone number of all the congressmen. Right. And uh, it's also got the uh, name and phone number for, not the name, but the phone number of the state legislators. Right. Now, I've been told that the legislators pay more attention if you write a handwritten letter. Exactly. So that's why we put the address on here and the name so that you can write your congressman. And uh, we would like to send you this. And uh, it's free if you call the uh, office number 893-2444. And we'll send that out to you right away. And this is, uh, I believe, the most important DVD ever made. It's called Agenda 2. And it tells you a little bit about what's behind all of these things that are happening in Washington and in Louisville and in Kentucky and everything. So if you'll call us, we'll send this to you for free, too. Uh, so that number again is 893-2444. So, I mean, I think that uh, these congressmen need to hear from us. Right. And again, uh, to illustrate the point you were talking about, a handwritten letter, that is one of the first things they'll pick up. They're in inundated with emails and all the other electronic communications and it gets very little attention. But a personal letter, if somebody has sat down and taken that time to physically write the letter to put it in the mail, then the congressman knows that that is a very serious issue. And not only that person that wrote that letter, but there's dozens of others that would feel the same way. So it has an impact that will last for a long time. Well, I think we're running short on time, All right. and uh, give us a call right now. There's someone to answer the phone or an answering machine, 893-2444. We'll send you the video and this uh, newsletter that has the uh, name and address and phone number of our elected officials. So God bless you, and tune in again next week for the rest of the news.